Lord, bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, now and ever to the age of all ages. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Amshir, and uh, we read the gospel of the Lord with Zacchaeus, right? Um, <clears throat> this is the similar gospel that we read from on the third uh, Sunday of the blessed month of Tut, and oftentimes, most of the years, um, when the Feast of the Holy Resurrection um, comes earlier, we don't even get the opportunity to read this gospel a second time. Um, but as, as you probably noticed, the theme of this month, as we've said the last three weeks as well, it's hard to tell from the gospel of today. For the last three weeks, the last three Sundays, we've been going through the gospel according to St. John chapter 6, so, so the theme was the bread of life. <clears throat> and sometimes it, it might not become immediately apparent as to why the gospel um, of today applies. Um, <clears throat> maybe, i um, not sure, but maybe um, the gospel here is placed at the end to remind us of what has been completed and what is to come. Meaning, um, if we have the last three Sundays, focused on the concept of the bread of life and the importance of the mystery of the Eucharist in my life, then I have to be prepared with a life style and a heart like that of Zacchaeus. Of course, the lifestyle after he repented, not before. <clears throat> um, so this could be one possible reason why the church places the gospel once again before us, to remind us of where our hearts need to be uh, before we approach the holy bread of life. Another reason could be um, with the same idea, not just as we approach the bread of life, but also as we approach the holy days of the Great Lent, which start, God willing, um, uh, not this coming week, the, the week following. <clears throat> and as we probably said a few months ago, the name Zacchaeus means pure or innocent. And some people say, well, that wasn't appropriate for his name to be called this because of the lifestyle that he loved led before he met the Lord. Um, however, God calls us all to be righteous and pure and holy, and there's different levels of purity and holiness, and many are not necessarily fulfilling that call of holiness in their life. That does not mean that God, God intends everyone to, to come to the knowledge of the truth and to be saved and to be holy, but it is we who choose to accept the calling and to work out our calling in fear and trembling, or to disregard it. Um, so in terms of holiness and righteousness and purity, we can say there is an intersection of three different things. Um, uh, good deeds, good thoughts, or good faith, and good, um, good heart. Um, and it's these three things that comprise the holy, the holy person. Some people might just focus on the first, the good deeds, um, being a person of action, having a strong, um, a reliable person who, who does what they say and what they believe. And in a sense, actually, Zacchaeus had this because at first he believed to be rich was good. So all he cared about was to be, he didn't care how, he didn't care what the people thought. He just did whatever it took to be successful. And, um, Maybe to him at this time, it was appropriate. Um, and maybe even some of the Pharisees also thought what they were doing were appropriate, like St. Paul, for example, before um, his, his conversion. So, so, but sometimes people imagine or um, perceive the holy life to be just a collection of a bunch of good deeds, a, a, a bu bu bunch of good actions, uh, amount of prayer, um, fasting, giving, yes, um, but we have to make sure that we don't fall into the same trap as um, the, the hypocrites did, where being perfect in the law of whatever the, you describe the law to be, even the law of the church, yet my heart is far from God, um, or I have no relationship with Him, right? <clears throat> and it's not just what I say, but also, or, or even what I do, but also what my intention is in the heart. Um, for example, in the Holy Week, um, uh, when the, the betrayal 
is is at hand. Um, the church uh, chants the the beautiful hymn, the same uh, tune as uh, Beke Thronos, uh, which is Ave Chinon, which um, says his words were as smooth as butter or oil, but war was in his heart, um, and yet. Uh, they they were his words were darts. Who, who are we talking about here? What is this a prophecy of? Hmm? Judas, <laughs> right? Um, so we have to make sure we don't fall into the same thing when we come to church or when we pray and or when we even say good words to people. Do we really mean it? Um, what is our heart like when we're saying these things? Um, and so um, these are what Saint Paul considers. In the Galatians, the works of the law. He says, but, but by the works of the law, no flesh can be justified or saved. So just by doing good deeds, that doesn't mean it's going to get us into heaven. No matter how good um, uh, your, your deeds are, if they're just a collection of doing right things, that doesn't save. Um, they are important, yes. And if you look at the whole package of the holy person, yes, you're going to see good deeds. You're going to see fruit. But if it's just that, then that's not what comprises the holy person. <clears throat> so what do we have to add to that? Good thoughts or good faith. Um, so it's, it's kind of like saying, I have a car that I can, um, uh, or, or a plane that I can direct, uh, that, that, that is capable of attaining a, lot, a far distance. Um, it will get me places. But if my thoughts are in the wrong if, if I am aiming that car or that plane in the wrong direction, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I'm not going to get to my destination. Um, and so if my destination is another city and I'm turned the complete opposite way or there's a brick wall in front of me, I'm not going to get to my destination. Right? <clears throat> so others feel that it's through the mind that one comes to know God and to live a holy life. And that's, that's true. But again, that's not the whole uh, point of the matter. Um, and, and uh, this was a, a heresy in the early church of just coming to kind of like the, the Eastern um, religion, spiritual religions um, of being enlightened, right? Of just growing in knowledge. Um, growing in knowledge is important, um, but um, <clears throat> uh, and growing in faith is important as well, right? Um, because, like St. Paul says also to the Galatians, says, man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus. But some people go to the other extreme and say, I just have to believe. I just have to have strong faith, and I will be saved. Um, and they say, forget the works, the faith, it's all about the faith. But what's wrong with that? St. James says it very clearly, go to chapter 2, especially verses 18 and verse, uh, through 20. He says, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works, right? And then he says, faith without works is, is dead, right? So we can't just believe and then not live a holy life. It can't, it can't just be a matter of saying, I believe that my Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior, end of story, and then not live a holy life, not live a life of prayer, not um, struggle against sin. No, it's okay, God forgave me because I believe in him. But... How are you work? How is your life um, reflecting your 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 belief in Christ? Right. So so it's a whole package, <clears throat> and even to add to that, um, it's also a matter um, of the heart. Right. Others will still say it boils down to the matters of the heart and 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 the zeal and the desire um, of of the Lord. <clears throat> um, so, for example, like use the example of. You know, going back to the to the car uh, example, it's kind of like the kids who sit in the driver's seat say, I have the car and I'm going to pretend to drive, but you don't go anywhere, <laughs> right? And sometimes say, I, I, I'm in the car, I'm in the church, I, I, I'm, I, I'm baptized and I'm, I'm doing the things that the church asks of, asks of me. Um, and we imagine that we have the potential to live a holy night, life, but we don't do anything. We don't go anywhere. Um, and, and God asks us to turn to him with all our heart. Um, and uh, sometimes you say, oh, that, that person is living a sinful life, but they have a good heart. Um, and maybe even some people might have said the same thing um, about Zacchaeus. 
Um, but it's likely that uh, God desires for each and every one of us to have all of these things, to have the good heart, to have the good faith, to have the good actions. Um, and that's what com comprises a life of holiness, um, at least some of the basic building blocks. And so that's why the Lord asks us to love him with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strength. Right. <clears throat> and we we pray in um, the psalm in the midnight hour, Psalm 119, with my whole heart, I have sought you um, and let me not wander from your commandments. So we need to have a strong connection between our faith and, and our emotions and our doctrine or our faith, our, our beliefs and our lifestyle. Um, and it's these components that comprise the, the saint or the person who is living out their saintlyhood um, by the grace of God. And so, well, let's go to Zacchaeus of today. What was his problem? Was his problem with, with the deeds? Some will say yes, because he didn't have good deeds, but he was active, right? Um, <clears throat> did he have a good connection? So one thing about him, I'll, just, I'll say, he had a good connection between what he believed to be true and how he lived his life, right? So he believed that money is everything. So he did everything to attain money. It didn't matter what other people thought. He didn't, they hated him because he was a sellout. Um, he sold out his own people in order. Um, so I think we spoke about this last time, but you know, the tax collectors would take taxes from different groups of people. Right? <clears throat> the chief tax collectors, or there was a specific group of tax collectors that didn't just take from the foreigners, but they were called by the Romans to take from their own people. And this is what Zacchaeus was. And not only that, but he would um, bargain or bid. So the highest bidder uh, who would go to the Roman official and say, I could get this much taxes for you um, for the year, they would be allowed to collect the taxes. And the Romans didn't care how much the, the tax collector pocketed his own, as long as they got what he had promised them. Um, so that was another reason why, because of this um, uh, opportunity um, given to them to be deceitful, to take more than what was their, their um, right, um, there was a lot of corruption. Um, and so this coupled with the fact that they were doing this not to, to, to the foreigners, not to the Romans, but their own people. Um, this is why they were kind of grouped with, with the, the harlots and all the other types of sinners. Um, <clears throat> but Zacchaeus nevertheless had an extreme potential in that he had a good connection between what he believed to be true and what his heart was um, and where his actions were. He didn't just say, oh, I wish I could be rich, but he worked very hard to become rich. The problem was his goal of being rich. Um, and so he was misdirected. Um, and so, <clears throat> um, like the Lord says in the gospel, a good man out of a good treasure of hearts, bring, a good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things. So the problem was not his deeds as much as it was his heart. And so God said, he has potential. I love him. I'm going to go to him and fine tune him and put him in the right direction. All he had to do was that and look at what he became. Um, he, he filled out his calling to be holy and pure and, and, and righteous. Um, and according to the church tradition, he became a, a bishop of the city. Um, <clears throat> so um, the good thing, even in his early life, was that he was willing to sacrifice whatever it took to attain his goal. Um, and he didn't care much about what the people thought of, about him. Um, he just had his eyes set on the goal, um, and he would sacrifice anything to attain it. That's what we need to be like um, when it comes to not just our daily life, but our spiritual life as well. <clears throat> and you can even put in the same category, um, which we'll read in a few weeks from now during the Great Lent, the, the prodigal son, right? He had his eyes on on the money, which was the wrong goal, but he did whatever he could to, to attain it, even before the time. Um, and once it was gone, he realized, oh, my goal was wrong. Um, 
So he returned. <clears throat> and so some might say even his initial return to his father would be restored with physical blessings. Maybe he thought, oh, I'm just going to go back to my father and, be, and I'll get more money, right? You can interpret that somehow from, from the scripture. However, um, the father took it as an opportunity to even show more love and kindness and mercy towards him. Um, and so that created a renewal of the heart. Um, and everyone in the city probably hated Zacchaeus, except for maybe the Roman officials. Um, but Christ loved him because he saw his potential in him. And he went to him and he said, today I must stay at your house. Um, so no matter how sinful you think you are, and maybe we are sin all of us are sinful, um, but our sin is not greater than God's love. And when God comes and says, despite all of this, I see the potential in you to be holy and righteous and like me, and I, I want to give this gift to you. Just open open your, your heart to me. Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is probably the disconnect that oftentimes we have between our thoughts or our faith and our practice and our emotions or our heart. Of course, the, the heart is, is a complicated subject because um, there's, a lot, it, there's a lot of ups and downs when it comes to the heart. But the thing is, when our heart is directed properly, are we working out our salvation in fear? Is it being connected? So when we worship, is it with our mind, our body, our heart, our spirit? Or is it just a bodily act? Um, <clears throat> so... Um, Zacchaeus, again, he had a heart directed to money and pleasure and power, and his actions followed suit, right? He brought out whatever was in his heart, whether good or evil. Um, and that's a good thing. Um, sometimes we, we, we feel like, oh, no, I can only show and reveal to others whatever is good. Um, but hopefully that's not what we do when, when we repent um, sincerely or when we come to our Father. We have to reveal everything um, because... Um, it's like going to the doctor and hiding your sickness from him. What's the, what's the point of that? Don't even go to the doctor if that's the case. Um, uh, and, and so when we come to the Lord like this and we show him our sickness and our nakedness, he clothes us, he heals us, he perfects us to be more like him. <clears throat> and that's why in the, in the Proverbs it says, My son, my child, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Uh, so Zacchaeus easily gave to the Lord his heart that day it, because his heart was ready to go into whatever he was doing and vice versa. Um, and so, um, like the psalm says, your words I found uh, and, and I have hidden in my heart and, and that I might not sin against you. Um, <clears throat> so it seems like um, oftentimes um, many of us might not have the great virtue of the purity of heart that Zacchaeus had. And so we need to be more like him in that, in that case. And that would make it even easier for us and even others to tell if, if our heart is in the wrong place. Because if your heart is connected to your actions and your actions go astray, then you're able to tell that my heart is going astray. Um, but if you're just kind of hiding uh, whatever is inside and say, okay, I have to do one, two, three, and everyone sees, oh, that's great. But deep down, it's, it's full of um, darkness or dead men's bones, as the Lord says, um, then that's a, that's a great danger. And so we take this opportunity um, as we prepare ourselves for the Lent to, to make this our goal, that the purity of heart and mind and, and, and body. Um, <clears throat> and, and this is what it, it means in the, the Song of Songs, where um, it says, set me as a seal upon your heart, and a seal upon your arm. The seal upon the heart is like we were saying, the purity of, of, of thought and of, and of the internal purity. And then the seal on your arm is the external purity. And so we need the two to work hand in hand. We might feel sometimes that just because we're physically in the house of the Father, we're safe. Or when we start criticizing or judging our brothers and sisters, or even our loving father, just like the elder, um, the prodigal son's brother, then we're in danger of not uh, being saved. Um, so may, uh, maybe we could fall into that trap as well. So what do we do? 
We accept him into our house, in our heart, into our mind, into our actions, into our entire life, um, not just one part of it. Um, and this is why Zacchaeus, as as St. Luke says today, he was able to receive him joyfully. Um, he wasn't begrudging, kind of like the, the prodigal son's brother. Um, and so we receive him joyfully in church, at home, even when I'm one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, when I'm reading scripture, when I'm praying, it should be done an action of joy. If not, we, we, we still um, persist until God gives us that joy. Um, don't see it just as a chore, but as an opportunity to connect with our loving Father and Savior. Um, and so we have to make this change with all our strength and ask them to give us more strength and persistence to endure the temptations that will come because the temptations will come. Uh, that's why we put out in the beginning of the Lent, as we'll see. Um, <clears throat> so the last thing is, as we experience this in our own personal life, we have to give grace to others so that they may have the space to experience that in their own life as well. Um, many people might be on the wrong track with their actions, but they have potential in Christ, um, just like Zacchaeus did. Um, so instead of judging them for the state that they're currently currently in, see the potential that God has it can give them in order to be saints. And we, when we treat them that way, um, then we won't fall into judgment. Um, <clears throat> and maybe even that treatment might encourage them to live out their calling to be holy, um, as what happened with the Samaritan woman, as with the Zacchaeus, as with the disciples, and anyone who crossed the path of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> so let's all take this opportunity, um, since the Lent is coming, to start thinking and planning of, of what we need to do um, um, and who we need to be, more importantly. Um, so the areas that you'd like to grow in, the virtues that you'd like to attain, the sins that you'd like to tackle, the spiritual canons you'd like to form or perfect, um, make arrangements um, for that transformation from now. The more preparation, um, the better. And glory be to him now from into the age of ages.